Hi, good morning everyone and uh, welcome once again to our online program for this year, 2022. We are thrilled, we believe in that God will do great things in our life, in our church community this year. But it's great to have you, it's great to have you join us to worship God this morning. So let's pray. Father, we pray that as we enter into your worship, as we gather today, your presence will be here and that you help us to know more about you, get close to you in Jesus name. Amen. So let's go straight into worship. And after we hear the God's word, be blessed.
constantly, God. We want to serve you with everything that we've got. So, Father, we pray this morning that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon all of our hearts, Jesus. We pray that you pour your Spirit out on our hearts this morning, God. Father, we are declaring this morning that we want you, Jesus. We want you and only you, God. church hope you all have a great week michael here and today i'm going to be giving you guys the church news thank you for coming this morning to worship with us uh, we're part of the assemblies of god and we meet every single week at 10 a.m either online or in person we'd love to have you watching this but if you want to see what a typical sunday looks like then please head to our campus now and just fellowship with us uh, in person so not a lot of church news just one point discipleship school is starting again on the 24th of january at half seven and it's only on zoom so if you signed up then please turn up 
And that's all the news, guys. Hope you all have a great week. Enjoy the best of the service. Well, it's that time of the service where we bring our offering and uh, we give to God's work. Now, giving to God's work, giving our offering really is buying into what God is doing and being a part of what God is doing to, to reach out to the world, to reach out to our community and the world around us and, and to support God's work. So as we give, let's give knowing that we are telling God, thank you for all you've done for us and what you've done for us we want others to hear. So once I finish speaking, the various means by which we give will come on the screen and you can use any of them. And uh, I pray that as you give, God himself would show favor to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's carry on and let's uh, get before into the word and let's say the declaration. I declare today that I'm ready to hear from God. I'm tuning my heart into his word. I believe that Jesus is Lord and that his promises are true and that his word lasts forever. I believe that what I hear today could change my life because my best days are yet to come in Jesus name. Amen. Hi, everybody. Uh, you know, it's once again great to bring God's word to you. And uh, today I've got a message that I want to start this year with. And uh, I want to start this year really having a look at the subjects of prayer and uh, looking at what Jesus taught and really how he practiced prayer. And I believe we can learn a few things from there. I've entitled my message, uh, When Jesus Prayed. When Jesus Prayed. Now, <clears throat> prayer was a lifestyle uh, for Jesus. And as we go in the word, we will realize that Jesus had a unique way of engaging with prayer, which to me, when I studied and I was preparing to bring this word to you, I found it really, really fascinating, quite deep, and I was blessed in my preparation. So I, I believe that you will be blessed. Now, when we look at what Jesus and how he engaged with prayer, it really shows a way forward, which I really want to recommend to us, you all, everybody, for this year, 2020, that we make it a year that we pray. Okay. Now, we're going to look at two, three themes really in the New Testament, which really uh, shows us about Jesus and how he prayed. And I've, uh, the first one is Jesus' lifestyle when it comes to prayer. His lifestyle when it comes to prayer. And let's read Mark chapter 1 verse 35 from the NIV. Now, very early in the morning, whilst it was still dark, Jesus got up left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed, where he prayed. Now, Luke five sixteen puts it this way. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Other version says frequently, regularly, he withdrew to lonely places to pray. And Luke 6, 12 puts it this way. One of those days, Jesus went out to the mountainside and prayed and spent the night praying to God. 
I like what King James says, or New King James put it this way. Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. When we look at Matthew chapter 14, verse 23, it puts it this way. After he had dismissed them, in this way, after he has dismissed the crowd, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. And the last verse of scripture really is in Luke 9, 29, 28, sorry. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up to the mountain, onto the mountain to pray. Now, these verses really are quite uh, intriguing and they bring us some really important truth that we realize that for Jesus, prayer was a lifestyle. It was his lifestyle to actually pray. Now, Luke 5, 16, which we read earlier on, puts it really very nicely that he often withdrew. He often withdrew to lonely places. Notice not he just withdrew once to a lonely place to pray. But no, he often withdrew to lonely places to pray. As I said, other verses said he frequently withdrew to lonely places to pray. It is something that he did regularly. Regular, it was a regular occurrence, a regular practice for Jesus to every now and then withdraw to places to pray. Church, our Savior was a man of prayer. Our Redeemer was a man of prayer. If you want to sum one of the characters of Jesus, it will be this man was defined or was a man who prayed and he prayed a lot. The Mark version says that very early in the morning, very early in the whilst it was still dark, he got up from the house went to a solitary place where he prayed. Now, for many, many years of my early Christian year, uh, life, this was one of my motto. A great while before day. That was the King James. A great while before day. Jesus got up and went to a place and prayed. And I, re I remember always telling my wife, a little sleep, a little slumber, and then poverty will overtake you because Jesus always got up and prayed. So I made it a, a point to get up and pray and obviously disturbing everyone in my house. But Jesus didn't do that. He actually got out and went somewhere to pray. And I asked myself, why? Because he didn't want to be disturbed. His time with God was so precious, he did not want to be disturbed. He didn't want anyone to bash in the door when he's praying. He didn't want, uh, you know, to make uh, be praying and possibly praying out loud. And then someone saying, you are disturbing can he find somewhere else to go? If he was in an adjoining uh, maybe house, you know, the neighbors might phone the police and say, there's someone making noise here. You know, can you come and a, a nuisance noise? No, he didn't want that. So he took himself a great while before day. Now theologians will tell you that that was very, very early in the morning, possibly about, uh, you know, 3 a.m. We drew, got up in the morning, went somewhere, you know, and then prayed. This guy prayed, prayed, and prayed, and prayed, and he prayed and prayed. I like what uh, the Luke 6, uh, 6, 12 say that one day he went to the uh, mountainside and he prayed, and he prayed all night. I always wonder, why would he pray all night? Praying all night, spend time praying to God, praying to God, spending all night in prayer you might say well but this was a son of God yes Jesus was a son of God all right he had turned water to wine healed the sick caused the blind to see cast out devils as a matter of fact the uh, evil spirit were afraid of him commanded the wind 
and all the storm to be still. But one of the secret things about his life was that he had a prayer lifestyle. He had a lifestyle of prayer. He had a lifestyle of prayer. Church, I really want to encourage you or anybody listening to me out there, let's make this year a year that we pray, that we take our prayer life to a whole new level. Learn from the lifestyle of Jesus and really engage in prayer. Engage in prayer. You know, let's engage in prayer. And let's, you know, see what God does. Because it is through prayer that we connect to God. We hear from God. We get strength from God. We get direction from God. We get answers from God. It is through prayer that we begin to seek first the kingdom of God. And all other things are then added to us later. Jesus had a lifestyle of prayer and he did not compromise when it came to prayer. He did not compromise when it came to prayer. He did not really water down prayer. He did not let the world around him and the things around him and events happening around him influence or affect his prayer life. No. He made time to move away to places to pray. He did not let any distraction, work or ministry work or anything whatsoever distract him because he knew his time with God was so precious because there he is empowered, he is equipped, he hears from God. He hears the direction that at times we so want. What must I do? What do I need? Go to God in prayer. Go to God in prayer. If our Savior did it, he set an example for us, then we have to do and follow in his uh, footstep. So much he had uh, spent the night praying. He has spent the night praying. Jesus walked through this earth to show us the heart of God. And one of the things that he showed us is the fact that we should be communicating with our Father a lot. We should communicate with our Father. Let's get back to our roots. Let's get back to our roots as you know, Christians, as Pentecostals, Christians, let's get back to our roots and be people that pray and pray the more. Let's pray like Jesus did. Jesus walked this as to show us the way and to urge us on to follow his lead when it comes to prayer. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So follow my lead. Follow my lead. That song says, follow the leader, follow the leader. We follow what Jesus does and we get the result that Jesus got. He spent a lot of time in you know, places praying more than talking. So let's follow Jesus' lead. Then we come to Matthew chapter 14, verse... Uh, 23, and it says this, after he had dismissed them, this, as I said before, referring to those who followed, because there were a lot of people that followed Jesus. After he had dismissed them or dismissed the congregation, he left and went to other places and he prayed. Church, Jesus made time to pray. Why? He knew the, that it was where he got his strength from. So let's what follow the lead. So he prayed by himself. But as time went on, he began to add his disciples to his prayer life. He began to what model a style and a structure to them that they need to be prayerful. 
he began to have this model, you know, to pray and, uh, you know, to teach them to pray so that when he was not around, they would uh, be able to pray. Church, prayer has great benefits and results. We need God to be in our presence and then let's pray. Let's pray like we've, we, we need him so much. So Luke chapter 9 verse 28 reads about eight days after Jesus said this he took Peter John and James with him and went up to the mountain and prayed now what was Jesus doing here so Jesus was setting this example with his disciples that they will begin to follow. Jesus was beginning to set a standard for corporate prayer. Yes, he prayed by himself, he prayed alone, but this time he was calling out his disciples to join up with him to pray. So he was setting up a standard for corporate prayer that yes, you pray on your own, but we must pray together which will become a powerful force for the disciples when he was taken up or he went to heaven. And they also carried on in prayer. So as a church, let us learn from Jesus' lifestyle that we must gather together to pray. Let's take advantage of the opportunity that is created by our senior pastor, the means that he puts in place for us to come together and pray. Yes, we are in the pandemic, but we have got means that we bring us together to pray. We have our online prayer time. Join in. Join in to pray. When there's an in-person uh, prayer, let us gather and join in to pray. And, uh, you know, friends can form groups, uh, uh, prayer groups to pray regularly. And husband and wife can be a formidable team to uh, meet and pray together and uh, you know connect groups which we have in our church can be means and tools where we can meet and pray together the scripture really says somewhere that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray i will hear from heaven and i would heal their land church our land needs healing and it will be healed through prayer. Let's meet together and let's pray. Let's pray. Then number two, we get into the mindset of Jesus when it comes to prayer. Let's get into the mindset uh, or uh, see the mindset of Jesus. Now, now, as I said before, now Jesus never really compromised when it comes to prayer. He doesn't really water it down. He doesn't make it, you know, something, you know, Prayer meant something to him and he really never joked about it. And we will see it in uh, you know, these two verses. Matthew 21 verse 12. Jesus entered the temple court and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling uh, doves. Verse uh, 13 says, and it is written, he said, my house will be called a house of prayer. But you have making it or you are making it a den of robbers. From here, we see that Jesus really was angry and upset at what he saw when he walked into the temple court, the house of God, what we will call the church in our modern day, you know, had become like a marketplace. He's, so he, he probably said, what? What is happening here? What am I seeing? I don't believe this. This is unthinkable. This is, this honestly, really, God's house being turned into a marketplace So he said, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer, a house of solution. 
but it's been turned into a den of robbers. So church, what Jesus was really trying to say is that my father's house will be called a house of prayer, a house of solution. Now, really he's saying that when you look at the context, now, these guys did everything in the house, but it's not pray. And that got to Jesus. They were having a business meeting. They were having their activities, buying and selling, changing money. But prayer, no. It was <clears throat> not one of the things on their agenda. And Jesus said, you've got it wrong. You've got this whole, uh, uh, you know, your priorities wrong here. My house or God's house or this temple is supposed to be a house of prayer, which means there ought to be a lot of prayer in God's house, followed by the other physical activity Jesus was saying. So if Jesus was to physically visit your house, visit your home, visit our church, what's he going to see being done there? What's he going to find happening? Church, Jesus wants his house, your house, your home, to be a house of prayer. And that is the mindset of Jesus. That is his mindset. Prayer is what he wants to see. In our, uh, in, in, you know, when he comes around and we add all other things to it. He wants us to spend time in prayer, in God's house, and in our individual houses. So let's make 2022 a time of prayer. Let's make uh, 2022, let's take our prayer life as individuals to a whole new level. And let's move our church because it's the people that make the church and take our prayer sessions and uh, events and times of prayer to a whole new level. And uh, that is why the songwriter says this, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All, oh, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And let prayer be our bedrock. Church, let prayer be at the center of whatever we plan to do this year. Let prayer be what you do. You see, in all our ways, let's acknowledge him through prayer and he will direct our path. Shall we pray? Father, we just want to thank you for this word that we've heard. I pray that, Lord, we will be go, uh, go and become doers of your word. Help us to implement this. Help us to, to make time to seek your face. And let this year be a great year. Let us encounter you. Take us forward in whatever we do. Let us know you more and more. And as we spend time to pray, reveal yourself to us. I pray in Jesus' name. I pray that if you're out there and you are hearing this word and you don't know about Christ, why don't you just pray with me that he invites him to come into your life. Just pray a simple prayer and say, Heavenly Father, I've heard this word. I believe in your word. I believe in the finished work of Jesus on the cross for me. And I yield my life to you completely. Wash me with his blood. Today, I give myself to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to pray that you have a wonderful week and have a wonderful month and indeed have a wonderful year. God be with you in whatever you do. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>